little urn. And you are still here with Unfiltered. I think I calmed down. I got myself a cold cup of water. I just so worked up about the Shannon Price taking pictures of Gary Coleman, Arnold, one of my icons of childhood, dead. You know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I think I'm going to have to go down and pay her an actual visit in the dungeon and administer some personal punishment. And then, of course, Paula Dean. The fact that's like everybody's grandmother. Uh, I mean, when you if you heard about your grandmother being robbed, just imagine what you would do. And then, of course, thinking about people perishing in various accidents in, you know, these godforsaken jobs that they have to work. But I think I'm okay. Stepped outside, took a quick jog around the block, um, and I'm okay now. And, of course, I have on my orange socks and my orange underwear, which makes me happy. Just think about those. Let me tell you something. Put on some orange underwear someday. If you're wearing, like, your white stuff or whatever, you got to mix it up. You know, in school, they're always like, sit in a new seat. Put on something orange. No one has to know. It's all underneath you. Put on some orange panties, underwear, whatever you do, bra, socks. I don't know. Get something orange, put it on. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, you're going to have a really good day. I don't know if it's the orange dye that does something to you that seeps into your skin. There's just something about orange that makes me happy, and it'll make you happy. Trust me. And if it doesn't, you know my phone number, 877-CHAT-212. Give me a call, and we'll work it out somehow. Well, speaking about being happy, I am happy to report that we have uncovered yet another medical term, which is entirely new to me. We had one that came up was three or four weeks ago, people that were sneezing and then they started speaking in different languages. And I can't remember what the term was. This is true. We talked about this. This was really out there. People that were speaking languages that they had never spoken in their lives. And then there was another medical situation where people were getting bumped and all of a sudden they were speaking with an accent and again, it was an accent that they never spoke in their lives. I believe it was a, a British lady who got bumped in the head, and all of a sudden she was still speaking English, not another language, but then she had a, an Asian accent, a Chinese accent, and all of her friends thought she was joking with them whenever she was calling, that it was a prank call. Well, anyways, this has nothing to do with languages, although if you do engage in this behavior, you better... Um, have a good speech for the judge because you could find yourself in some trouble. I mentioned this before the break. Sex somnia, which is a take on insomnia. Sex somniacs. <laughs> exactly. Did you know about this word? Did you hear about this? Have you all back there heard of sex somnia or sex somniacs? Joy's just going to town on the Twitter. She wouldn't even look at me. She's scared. She's turning red. She's hurrying sex. You know, I said sex. And she's like, oh, my God. I'm, you know, she's hunched over the computer. Hopefully it's not on a porn website. Anyways, sexomnia. It's a word I discovered today, a play on insomnia. Now, we know what insomnia means. That's when you can't go to sleep. You're an insomniac. You know, you, you can't go to sleep. Get this. Sexomnia. S-E-X-S-O-M-N-I-A, in case you want to look it up. Exactly. Everything's a Google search away in this day and age. Now, now that I say that, I can already imagine that there could be some type of porno movie out there. If you get um, you know, sent to a triple X portal, please don't blame me. If you're under the age of 18 listening, don't say that Little Learn made you do it when your parents come and beat your behind. Or one of these people from Dateline NBC walks on and, you know, there's cameras all around you. Sexomnia. Get this. A study released today at the Associated Professional Sleep Society's annual meeting. Yes, you heard me right. There is an annual meeting that's put on by the Associated Professional Sleep Societies, which to me sounds like it would be really boring. Like that would put me to sleep. But I don't think today's lecture would because get this. The meeting was in San Antonio, Texas. Wow, we're back in Texas again. The society found that 7.6% of patients seeking help at a sleep clinic report that they had initiated or engaged in sexual activity with a bed partner while asleep. That's right, you heard me. Almost 10% of patients that go to sleep clinics are there because they had engaged in sexual activity while asleep 
Uh, now, I, 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 yeah, yeah, congratulations. I mean, everybody's taken Viagra and Cialis and all, and all this mess. I mean, people are having so much difficulty getting it up when they're, you know, fully aware. <laughs> you know, so congratulations to these people that can somehow manage to um, engage in fornication while they're, you know, watching cows jump over the moon or sheep jump over a fence or whatever you do to get to sleep. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the sound we really want when we're talking about um, sexual relations. But, anyways, I thought this sounds impossible. <laughs> How can you literally have sex while you're asleep? You know, you read this stuff, and it's radio, and I know right now. It's just like I'm already envisioning myself having sex in my sleep. When you hear the spoken word, you can't help but get a mental image to go with this. Um, uh, but um, they say that it's real. Now, the term was actually coined in 2003 up in Canada. Those damn Canucks up in Canada. Um, in 2003, they actually labeled it. And, uh, you know, and I thought about this and they pointed this out. This was actually described in a certain sense in Othello. Go back and read Shakespeare's Othello. There was sleepwalking. Remember that was going on. Um, some sexomnia. So, you know, maybe this has been around a lot longer than um, anybody really, really knows. Um, modern day studies have documented people doing other things, um, dirty talking while sound asleep and other things that you do um, when you think about sex. Now, get this. When you are in a, a dream state normally, your body is actually in a form of paralysis. Now, this is according to Dr. Alex Dimitru, a fellow at the Stanford Sleep Medicine Clinic. Wow, are, are there just like sleep clinics all over the place? I mean, I guess there's clinics for everything else. Why not sleep clinics everywhere? Anyways, he was saying that normally in a dream state, your body is in a form of paralysis. And, it, it, you know, it, it prevents us from acting out uh, and things of that nature. But he says, and some people, this protective mechanism... The one that keeps us from acting out when we're asleep actually breaks down. And then there is the possibility of acting out the sexual content of an erotic dream. So, you know, you do the math. You're, you're dreaming about, you know, I don't know, the cute girl in the cafeteria line that you always go get your jello from. Even though you don't eat jello, you just want to see her. You know, ladies out there, the UPS delivery guy. In every office I've worked in, there's always some UPS guy that all the ladies have a crush on. You can admit it now. There's always, you know, so many porns where there's the pizza delivery guy, the UPS guy. So let's all just admit it. Now, <laughs> this all might seem funny. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow, like this really could be true. Now, I personally don't have any experience with this or else maybe I did have sex. And since I was sleeping, you know, it just wasn't reported. I mean, how terrifying would that be? Uh, imagine if you had sex with somebody and they never said anything like you, you could conceivably have maybe a child out there. Uh, I mean, what if this person thought you were awake the whole time and it was just a one night stand? You walked down the street, had sex with somebody, came home, just a one night thing. They never said anything. There could be little, little learns running around there. What would that be? Little learn cubed, little learn cubed, little learn to the second power. My math teacher's going to be proud if she's listening to me. Machine, bless your heart. Now, all of this might seem funny, but get this. There are some serious ramifications behind this. Behind this, it's not all fun and games when you're a sexomniac. Sexomniacs have issues, too. That's right. 